So here we have uh, a guy. Let's call him Tom. Okay, so now say Tom wants to work on a project with a couple other friends. So the first thing you might do is like create a file. Okay, cool. So now we have a file created. But okay, so now let's say Tom wants to write something down in this file. And he wants to collaborate with a friend called Jerry. So one thing we, one thing he can do to communicate this file to Jerry is just email it. Which okay, this probably works fine for this case. So Jerry can just receive the file, edit it, and send it back. Okay, but now what if this is a code file? Okay, so still, it doesn't seem that different. We can still just send the file and receive it. But the problem arises when we have multiple code files for a project. Because when working on a coding project, generally you won't have just one file of code. You'll have like one, two, or three, or a lot. And then when you try and send all these files over, you just become sad. So what can we do to fix this problem? There actually exists a solution to this specific problem called version control. And that's what we'll be getting into. Uh, specifically, we'll be talking about Git, which is uh, probably one of the more popular version controls nowadays. And specifically, uh, First, we'll be talking about using your terminal, which is essential to using Git. And uh, specifically, we'll be talking about using Bash. So if you're on Windows, uh, it's best to follow along using Git Bash if you have that installed on your computer. And otherwise, uh, later on, I'll be going over the Windows equivalents of the Bash command. OK, so when we open up our terminal, the first thing we see is uh, a prompt on the left, and then like a cursor. So, uh, so what exactly does this mean? So basically, your terminal corresponds to your file system on your computer. And okay, so like, where are we exactly on our computer? So we can run the command pwd, which stands for print working directory, where directory is like your file. So if we run the pwd command we see that we're in the slash home slash ashes directory. Uh, so basically this corresponds to an actual place on your file system that you can view normally in a file explorer. Um, okay, so let's try making a directory with the make dir command. So you can see we, we ran mkdir, which stands for make directory. So we're making the directory my, uh, my app. And then we're running cd my app, which means change directory to my app. And don't worry, uh, there'll be a visual like description of what's going on as well. Um, so after we change directory to my app, uh, we can run pwd again, and we see that uh, our path has changed to uh, slash my app. And originally we were in just slash home slash ashes. So this is equivalent to opening up your file explorer and creating the my app directory in your home directory. So, so you can see again how originally we were in slash home slash ashish, which is represented by this. And then we make the directory my app, and then we go into the my app directory and see we're in slash my app. And this corresponds to how we're in my app over here. So, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal. So let's try creating a file. We can do this using the touch command. So let's just try creating a myfile.js. And it'll be empty right now, but that's OK. Uh, so if we go back to our file explorer, we can see how the myfile.js was created inside of this directory. And uh, so just how you can view all the files in your directory in your file explorer, you can also uh, list the files in your directory inside your terminal using the ls command, which stands for list. So since we ran ls in my app, we see that we have one file named myfile.js. OK, so that's great. Now we have uh, a file. OK, so now, uh, so this is yet another command that we can use called mv, which stands for move. And 
You can use this to move files around or to rename files. Um, <coughs> basically, right now, we're moving my file to JS to a new file called ABC. And we can verify that this worked by running ls. And we see how now we have an ABC file. Well, before we only had myfile.js, after running move myfile.js to ABC, we see that now we have ABC inside of our directory. Uh, so we, we changed the name of my file to ABC. So ABC is now a file. Okay. That used to be my file at JS. And when you chose the extension .js, you just chose it because you know you're going to use the .js file. It's not yeah, it's arbitrary. It's just a name. Okay. Yeah. And normally you won't have file names that, are, that don't have extensions, but just for this case, we, um, it's just an example. Okay, so um, now this is the copy command, which is cp, and basically it's uh, very similar to move, except that it leaves the old file intact. So now, if we try and copy abc to xyz, we see, and then list the files, we see that we have two files in the directory now, abc and xyz. So think of it as move, except that you don't delete the old copy. And finally, uh, if we decide we don't want ABC or XYZ, we can run the RM command, which is uh, which stands for remove. And so basically, we're just removing both ABC and XYZ. And we can put um, like we could we could just as well have done just RM ABC and only removed ABC, or we could have done RM XYZ and only removed XYZ, <coughs> or we can add as many files as we want after and remove all of them. And so when we run LS, we see that all of our uh, files are gone inside of this directory. Okay, so um, so now we know how to basically navigate through directories, but um, say we want to move up a directory. So like say you're inside of a file directory, but you want to go to like the parent file, the, the parent file directory. So uh, so we can do this using a special file name called dot dot, which stands for like your parents directory. And so you can see this visually here, uh, where we were originally in the my app directory. And then when we change directory to dot dot and print our directory, we see that now we're no longer in the my app directory because we've moved up the directory. And um, you can change you can chain these together by doing like dot dot slash dot dot and like move up two directories and etc. And finally, uh, this is an rmdir command, which stands for remove directory. And uh, so basically what this does is it just removes the directory. So we're removing my app. And then we see when we try to change directories into my app, it's, it complains that there's no file or directory because we've removed it. OK, so this is just a recap of the commands we went over. Uh, and these are the Windows equivalents of these commands in case you're on command prompt or something. So, uh, so print w, uh, pwd is print working directory, which just reveals where you are uh, in your terminal. Uh, ls just lists all of the files in your current directory. Uh, and dir is equivalent on Windows. Uh, mkdir is make directory, which allows you to create a new directory inside of your current location. RM allows you to remove a file or files, and the equivalent on uh, Windows is Dell. Uh, RMDIR is remove directory. Uh, MV is move from source to destination. So move a file from the source location to the destination location. And CP is copy a file from the source to the destination. OK. So now we can get into uh, Git. Now that we have like we know the basic command line. Okay. So let's go back to the case with Tom and Jerry. So Tom had a bunch of these files that he wanted to send to Jerry, and we're not exactly sure how to do this. But luckily, we can use Git to help us with this. And uh, specifically in this class, and uh, usually, like. 
when you're working on your own project, you'll use a, a, a Git host such as GitHub, and that's GitHub's like logo. Uh, and basically how this works is that both you and GitHub both run Git on your respective computers. And okay, so let's get into how this can help us. So instead of you sending your files directly to your uh, whoever you're working with, GitHub can serve as a man in the middle, and where everyone like uh, submits their files to GitHub or whatever Git provider you're using, and GitHub can then like serve your files to uh, whoever else. And the and, and also a secondary feature that this is helpful for is in case you ever need to roll back your changes if you suddenly like submitted if you suddenly like change your code and now it doesn't work you can always revert your changes with Git. And uh, so let's get into the high level workflow of how this works. Oh, and just just as a side note, uh, Git was actually invented for by the creator of Linux. Uh, because he didn't find existing version control satisfactory for large projects. Okay, so let's get into the actual Git workflow. So, how exactly would Tom use Git? Okay, so the first thing he would do is say he had three files that he created. Uh, so you can see the three files there, but he only had one file that he actually wanted to, like, he only finished one file, so he wants to uh, like, give other people one of those files. Like, let's call it the middle file for now. Okay, so we have the file that we want to uh, like submit or to GitHub or whatever. So the first thing we do is we need to stage this file because we don't want to let other people see our unfinished files. We don't want to let them see like that file or that file. So. We stage only the file we want people to see. And then after we finish staging the file, we can then push the file to GitHub. And GitHub will now have this file. OK, so now let's bring back Jerry. So Jerry's on the right again. And now it's like he wants to get the file from GitHub. Jerry wants to retrieve this file from GitHub. Okay, so GitHub has the file that we just committed from Tom. So Jerry can pull this file from GitHub, and now he'll have the file that Tom committed. Okay, great. So now the file that they both wanted to communicate within, between each other, they both have. And the two files that Tom didn't want Jerry to receive, Tom still has. Okay, but now let's get into a more complicated case. Say that Jerry, uh, and again, Jerry's always on the right and Tom is always on the left. So now say Jerry, not knowing that Tom had these two files on him, tried to make two of the same files, but his own versions of them. So see, here we have like an upside down file and here we have an upside down file. This just stands for like a different file. Okay, so now we have a problem. Both. Tom and Jerry have two different versions of the same file. Okay, so let's see what Git can do about this. So say that, again, Jerry tries to commit his changes to these two files, or he created them and changed them. So now he tries to commit them to GitHub. Okay, so he stages those two files here, and then he pushes them to GitHub. So now GitHub will have Jerry's version of these two files and Tom's version of the middle file. Okay, but now we have a problem. Say Tom tries to stage his files because he doesn't know that GitHub has uh, Jerry's two files. Okay, so Tom can successfully stage these two files. And, okay, great, now we have two files staged. But when, we, when he tries to push them to GitHub, GitHub won't let him push, push these files. And this is because uh, GitHub can't accept them because they contradict 
the two files that Jerry pushed prior to this. So that won't work. So what can Tom do about this? So Tom can pull the file changes from GitHub to his uh, computer. So, okay, now GitHub can send like Jerry's two files that he created and Tom can receive them. So now Tom will have uh, the two versions of the files. Now, normally Git can automatically run these two files, like if they modify different parts of the same file. But just in case, like, uh, both users modify the same parts of the same file, the, this is called a conflict. And then the users need to fix these conflicts themselves. So, okay, so now Tom has the two versions of the same files, and now Tom wants to merge these files. And okay, say he merges them and creates his own, ver like the fixed versions, like he takes the best ver parts of Jerry's changes and the best parts of his own changes, and then he uh, makes his new versions of his files. Okay, so now he can restage his files and then push them back to GitHub. And now GitHub will have uh, both Tom's changes and Jerry's changes, both. Okay, so we saw like the high level way to do this, but uh, let's try and actually put this into practice and do this for an actual case. Okay, so let's make a directory again that we'll pretend is our project directory called my app. Uh, and then we'll change directories into my app. And then we'll make a file called my file on JS. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is run git init. And this basically initializes a git repository. And so we see that the terminal says, initialize empty git repository in slash home slash master slash my app. And uh, we see that it says that it made a folder called dot git. But if we, if we run the command ls, we see that it doesn't seem like anything has changed inside of our directory. And this is actually because dot git is a hidden folder. So this might get confusing, but generally whenever a directory or a file begins with a dot, it means that it's a hidden file. And but what if we want to view this file? We can do this by running ls and then dash a. And what this basically means is we're running the a flag on ls, which means we're listing all, because a stands for all. So when we list all, we see that we have myfile.js, we have our .git folder, and we have dot and dot dot. And basically, dot just stands for your current directory. And as mentioned before, dot dot stands for your parent's directory. OK, great. So after git init, we see that we made our dot git folder, and our repository is now initialized. OK, so your main go-to command will be git status, because this will just provide you information about your git repository. So if we run git status, we see that we're on branch master, which just means like your main, uh, the main place where all of your code will go. And we see that we have one untracked file. And in this case, it's myfile.js that we just created. Uh, so basically, now we need to actually, if we want to actually uh, commit my file, we need to stage this file to tell Git that we want to submit this file to uh, wherever. And we run this with the git add command, which says, OK, we want to stage this file. And if we run git status again, it will tell us that we're uh, that we've successfully staged this file, and we now have changes to be committed. Uh, okay, so after we're done staging all our files, we can commit these staged files to say, okay, we're done with like what we're doing here. And uh, we can run this with the git commit command. And so basically, after we've added, after we've finished adding all of the files that we like want to submit for our current change, we run git commit to say, okay, I'm done with all these files and uh, ready them to be submitted to GitHub. Or any Git remote, not necessarily GitHub. Uh, okay, so we've now successfully committed this file. It says one file has been changed and created my file.js. Okay, cool. So now if we run git status, we see that we're on bench master, nothing to commit, and our working directory is clean, which means that our repository is uh, in like a normal state and 
everything has been committed. Okay, so how can we access this stuff for us? Because you don't want to be using your tag. But anyway, we see how uh, when we run git status, we see that my file at js is now modified because we've added that line to the file. And okay, so we can try adding this file. We can try staging this file and then committing this file. And uh, we see, okay, we successfully committed this file. But then sometimes when you run git push, you might see it says that uh, rejected, like some, some things failed to push because the remote contains word that you do not have. Uh, and okay, so what basically this means is that one of your teammates has pushed code to the to GitHub, and you have not like received these changes. So Git cannot just like push your files and overwrite their files because that would be bad. So what we need to do is we need to merge these files. And you can see how Git status provides us a hint and says we can run Git pull before pushing again. Okay, so we can try this. Oh, and this is just to show that someone else had modified this file and with a different code. Okay, so we can receive these changes using the git pull command. And, okay, so we can see how git tries to auto merge these two files. So basically, if both of you have modified the same file in different locations, then, okay, the auto merge might work. But in this case, this won't actually work because there's a merge conflict. And what that means is that both of you have modified the same parts of the same file. So we need to fix this manually. And you can see Git telling us to do this, because it says there's a conflict in the content. Uh, it, it says fix conflicts and then commit the result. OK. So when we open up the file again, we see how uh, we see these weird like, less than signs and then head. And then we see equal signs, and then we see greater than signs, and then like a hash. So basically, this means that we have uh, our changes over here that we remember creating from before. But we also have these changes that we don't remember doing. So everything above these equal signs is the changes that we made. And everything below these equal signs is the changes that someone else made. So after, so again, after pulling our files, uh, we see that this is the version that GitHub has, and this is the version that we have. So, so say that now we want to pick one of these changes to keep because we don't want both of them. OK, so we can remove this line that we, ma we made and keep the second line. And OK, so now we'll remove the head and the hash and the equals, and we're just left with this line. OK, so now we've successfully uh, fixed this conflict and kept the changes that we wanted. OK, so now. We've, we can run git status again, and we see that it says both are modified, my file.js. And since we're done merging these, this file, we can git add this file, which stages it, and then commit these changes. And OK, so this commit is just to merge the two files that we had. And then we have, it says that master has been merged. OK, so now we've success, successfully fixed this conflict. And we can run git push and see that it, this time it seemed like it's, it has seemed like it successfully has pushed to the remote. And if we check GitHub, we see how it has received our merged change, and uh, like we successfully like have both of our changes in it. And next we'll be going over web essentials. HTML and CSS.